Kellogg's Pep, the build-up wheat cereal, invite you to rock it into the future with Tom Corbett, Space Cadet. Stand by to raise ship, blast off minus five, four, three, two, one, zero! rockets blast off to distant planets and far-flung stars, we take you to the age of the conquest of space with Tom Corbett, Space Cadet. On Rhea, one of the moons of Saturn, the whole universe's supply of a rare, new miracle medicine, Viricide F3, is threatened by a gang of space bandits. The Polaris unit, with Colonel Cowan of Solar Guard Intelligence, heads for Rhea to foil the gang. But the Polaris, its rockets damaged, goes adrift in space. So Tom Corbett and Colonel Cowan, leaving Roger Manning and the wounded Astro behind, set out in a jet boat. And thanks to Tom's skillful piloting, they arrive at the airless little world just before their fuel runs out. Wonder where the switch is, Tom, for the entrance to the atmosphere dome. Right here, Colonel. Hey, hello there. I saw you blasting in, and I thought I'd come down to meet you. I'm Bailey, Ned Bailey, in charge of materials. I'm Colonel Cowan, Solar Guard. And this is Cadet Corbett. Oh, I'm glad to know you, but how is... It's a long I... story, and just now we haven't much time. So will you take us to Mr. Adams right away? Adams? Oh, I'm afraid not, Colonel. Why not? Isn't he general manager here? Yeah, sure he was, but he died suddenly the other day. What? Yep. So you'll probably want to talk to Ed Malvern as assistant manager he took over. But about Adams, when did well, he... Well, Bailey, visit him. Oh, here he is now. Hey, Ed, some fellas to see you. So I got. Oh, welcome to Rhea, gentlemen. You, Colonel Cowan? That's right. And Cadet Corbett. Fine, fine. Earth General Headquarters, audio us that you'd be coming. Did they tell you anything else, Mr. Malvern? Oh, there was some crazy yarn about danger, but you know how those boys at the HQ go for a story like that. But this time, I'm afraid it's true. Hmm? Are you prepared to defend Rhea, Mr. Malvern? Defend? Oh, come now, Colonel. We're practical folks here, down-to-earth businessmen. You may be out of business soon. Haven't you warned your men, gotten arms from Titan? Hey, what's this all about, boss? Oh, some space gag about a gang attacking us, Bailey, stealing the F-3 supply, blasting the plants and the men. Don't worry about it. Look, sir, there is such a gang. It wants to monopolize all the F-3 virus side in the entire universe. Then that's quite a story, but a little far-fetched, if you ask me. Now, believe me, my boy, if we got upset about every weird rumor like this, when would we get around to making the medicine? One of the gang's gunmen took over our ship for a while. Or was that a rumor, too? What? Hey, boss, maybe... The... Yes, and he said he was to rendezvous with the rest of them somewhere near Rhea. Good heavens, if this is true, Colin. I tell you, they may strike any time. We'll do what we can here, and let's also send a coded audio message to Solar Guard headquarters. All right, you go with Bailey. Start organizing things. I double as a radio operator so I can get the coded message off. You'd better send it, hadn't you, Colonel? Why, no, let Malvin do it. I'm going to be pretty busy for a while. Come on, Bailey, let's get going. <laughs> Come on, Tom. Well, where are we going, sir? The communications room. You're right, Tom. I should have sent that message to the solar guards myself. Well, golly, what's made you change your mind so fast? Malvern supposedly sent through a report on Adam's death. Adams died two weeks ago. Yeah. But two days ago, Earth office knew nothing about it. In fact, messages were still coming through signed with Adam's name. Say, that's strange. More than strange. Particularly when Malvern's the communications officer. But, sir, that might mean he's one of the gang himself. That he was somehow responsible for Adam's death. It's a possibility. But before we make up our minds, let's see what kind of message he's sending. Here's the building. Oh, through this door, sir. I wonder which is the audio room. Wait, Tom. I hear something. Over this way. Malvern's voice, all right. Can't make out a word, though. If we can get this door open, just the crack. So that's the situation, Chief. Chief? Why, I call it. Let's listen. I don't think they suspect a thing so far, but they may soon. Don't wait any longer, Chief. The pack at once. You were right, Colonel. He's one of the gang. Yes. Prepare to take him as soon as he breaks contact. Okay. Move in, then. Yes, I'll be ready, Chief. And transmission. No? I've got my parallel ray ready. Right. Come on. All right, Malvern. Get away from that audio transmitter. So, Colonel Cowan, I underestimated you. Unfortunately, you've come late. Oh, no, I haven't. 
My friends are on their way. Or didn't you hear? We heard. And so did the Solar Guard. You sent out a straight voice message, Malvern, on an open frequency which the guards listen to all the time. You must think I'm a fool, Colonel. I used low power. Not enough to reach any Solar Guard station. Well, we've still got you. Wrong again. Max? Yeah, boss. Great Jupiter. Don't move either of you guys. Show them your heat ray, Max. Okay, boss. Yeah. Take a look. Which trumps your ace, Corbett. Drop that parallel pop gun of yours. Colonel, I'm willing to take a chance Drop and what I said. Or Max blasts you to ashes. Do as he says. Your gun's no match for his. Okay. Get the door of steel wire, Max. It's over in that corner. Sure thing, boss. I don't know what your plan is, Malvin. But Bailey's alerting the men now against attack. You'll never succeed. Want bet? In the first place, you two are being tied up with Dura Steel wire. You got it, Max? Got plenty. I'll trust them up good. Well, somebody will release us. Some of your own men will realize what's going on. Sure they will. All of them will. When our spaceship arrives and blows a hole in the atmosphere dome... What? But that's mass murder. Everyone in the colony will die of suffocation. No, not everyone, Colonel. Max and me, we'll be in spaces. I can understand you're doing this to us, but your own men, your friends... There's nothing personal about this, Colonel. There certainly isn't. Simply business, gentlemen, simply business. We want to get all the virus out of three there is. And we don't want any more produced for a long, long time. There's no better way to accomplish that than by wiping out all life on the face of Rhea. Every single creature on this satellite, gentlemen, must die. <laughs> We'll return to the exciting adventures of Tom Corbett and the Space Cadets in just a moment. So, stand by. Spaceman, Dr. Joan Dale wants to talk to you. Here, I'll press the buzzer so you can go into her laboratory. Come in, Spaceman. I'm taking time out from this experiment to talk to you about your official space goggles. Uh Uh-oh, speaking of space goggles, I'd better put my pair on. Oh, there, I've got them on now. And now I've got protection for my eyes against these flying sparks and the bright glow from the bubbling chemicals you hear. You know, these special goggles are official Space Academy equipment. They're made of one sweeping curved piece of colored plastic that fits comfortably over both eyes. I know every spaceman will want to own a pair. Space goggles come in handy when you're looking into the sun, heading into a strong wind, or when you're like me and you're working in a laboratory. Now, spacemen, for important instructions on how to get a pair of space goggles, just step outside the door. Spaceman's luck. Spaceman, send 25 cents. One box top from Kellogg's Pep and your name and address. To get an official pair of space goggles, send 25 cents. One box top from Kellogg's Pep and your name and address. Send this to Kellogg's, Box 346, Battle Creek, Michigan. That's Kellogg's, Box 346, Battle Creek, Michigan. Now, Spaceman... Send for your pair of space goggles today. And tomorrow, start off your day with Kellogg Pep, the build-up wheat cereal. General Manager Malvern of the F-3 plant on Rhea has been revealed as a member of the space gang which aims to take over the universe's entire supply of the life-giving viruside. Capturing Cadet Corbin and Colonel Cowan of Solar Guard Intelligence, he tells them that the gang's rocket ship will soon blast a hole in the satellite's atmosphere shell, killing everyone in the colony by suffocation. And he orders his pal Max to tie the two captives up securely. Max! Got him trussed up good and tight? He has. Your pal knows he's dirty business. Thanks, kid. All set, boss. Nobody's going to break those Dora Steel wires. And we'd better get our spacesuits, so we at least will survive the attack. You rotten space crawlers! No use struggling against those wires, cadet. No use at all. The Solar Guard's going to catch up with you someday. Perhaps, but you'll hardly be celebrating the occasion. No hard feelings, I trust. This is simply business, you know. Colonel Cowan, are you all right? You didn't say anything. I wasn't anxious to keep them here. I guess we've had it, sir. Max was right. We can't break these wires or even twist them. We don't have to. Getting loose isn't our problem. What? Wriggle toward me so your fingers can reach the bottom of my trouser leg. Along the seam. Well, uh, yes, sir. I, I can feel something. It's a thin, diamondite blade sewed there. Start working it out. It'll cut through anything. Even Dura steel wire. By the credits of Luna, what luck. Not luck. Standard intelligence service procedure. 
It's often been useful before. Well, I've got the blade out, sir. Good. Here. Now start working on my wrists. Okay, Colonel. Okay, Corbett. Your hands are free. Now get the wire off your leg. Right. What are you going to do, sir? Get on this audio. Try to contact the gang, then pretend I'm Malvern and talk them out of attacking. It might work. Worth trying. If only I knew their code word or even some of their names. Well, we'll see. Emergency call! This is Malvern. Emergency call! Jupiter, aren't they even going to answer? Hello, Malvern. This is the chief. Anything wrong? Plenty, chief. Go back. Call off the raid. What? You're off your gyro. Listen, the solar guard's here. They're wise. Since when? There have been no ships on our radar. They sneaked up on the other side of Rhea, didn't register. Wait a minute. What's the code word, Malvern? There, there's no time for that, I tell Shut you. Up. If you Malvern, give it to me. I, I forget, chief. I'm, I'm too excited. Face dust. Hey, wait a minute. You must be the colonel Malvern was talking about. The solar guard, Big Shot. Uh-oh. Yes, I'm Cowan. And I'm warning you not to attack. Don't you know better than to waste your breath? You can't fight back and we're coming in. Listen. Listen to me. He switched off. Good try, sir, but it doesn't look as if we can stop them from blasting the dome. No. Come on, Tom. We have to warn everybody. Tell them to get into space suits. Yes, sir, and then try to find a way to win out against mighty rough odds. <laughs> There's Bailey, the fellow we talked to first. Good. Bailey, have everybody get space suits, quickly. Hey, how'd you two get loose? Stay back or I'll shoot. Oh, no, he must be another one of the gang. I doubt it. If so, he'd have left. Why the gun, Bailey? I know all about you. Malvern told us you're crazy, dangerous. That killer thinks of everything. Listen, Bailey, Malvern lied to you. He's one of the gang who are going to attack Rhea any minute. Yeah, that proves your space happy. Keep away from me. Listen, Bailey, the atmosphere dome is going to be blasted. Everyone on Rhea is going to be wiped out unless you move fast. I don't believe it. Stay away. Tell me, Bailey, where's Malvern now? How should I know? Well, I think I know. He and Max are getting spacesuits so they can live when the air dome goes. Why, you're lying. You don't believe me, eh? Well, look over there behind you. Ah, I don't see that. Take him, Corbett. Right. All right, I got him, sir. Run him close. Don't struggle. We won't hurt you. Uh, Malvern, warn me. I should have killed him. Don't go, cadet. I've got his gun now. Don't. Don't blast me, please. Don't worry, we won't. Look, Bailey, would it do any harm to get everybody into space suits? I, I, well, wait a minute, I'm all mixed up. No time. Uh, Corbett, look up there at that dot in the sky. Great Jupiter, it's the killer ship coming into attack. <laughs> Did you find anything we can fight with? Not a thing. The jet boat we came in is useless. And there's nothing that flies unless you count body jets. What, against spaceships? No weapons except the handguns you distributed either. Why, they'd be all right for close combat, but they're just pop guns in a fight like this. Well, I hope maybe you fellas could find something in the storehouse, something we wouldn't think of. Only a lot of building material, jars of chemicals and acid, lab equipment... Nice breakable stuff. But nothing to fight a battle with. Here on Rhea, we've been busy making medicine to save lives. We never thought about taking them. Here it is. They fired a warhead. That dome's gone. Helmets on, everyone. Oh, I just it. oh, we pulled them this much. We won't die of suffocation. Uh-oh. It doesn't look as if they're counting on suffocation. They're firing warheads at us point blank. That's bad. It won't take many to blow this area to space dust. Bailey, where is the medicine store? The S3. Over there, the small white building. Get everybody into it. That's what the gang's after. So they'll treat it with kid gloves. Yeah. Come on, man, this way. We'd better follow, Corbett. It'll give us time to see. Wait, sir. The ship's still firing, but no warheads are landing here. Funny. Yes, it... Look. Look, there's another ship, and it's fighting the gang. Oh, Polaris. Astro and Roger finally got the old girl patched up. It's just limping along, though. They're in no shape to take on that gang. But they certainly have nerve. If nerve is only enough. But two men trying to fight with a patched up ship. Oh, Jupiter, look at that. They're hit. Their firepower is gone. Well, I'm afraid that does it, Corbett. No. No, they're still underway. What are they doing? Heading for the gang ship. They're going to ram. They did. The ships are locked together. But both of them are out of control. They'll crash. It won't be a real crash, sir. The rockets are still giving some support. And the gravity is low here. They'll spin into the ground not far from the dome. By the rings of Saturn, you're right. Let's go. 
Colonel Roger and Astro may need help. Someone's coming toward us from one of the ships. Get your gun ready, Corbett. All ready, sir. Hey, it's Roger. Roger, are you all right? And where's Astro? Get down, Tom, both of you. It's the dirt, sir. See what I mean? Those space rats can still fire. We'd better start crawling to the door. Okay, but Astro... He's trapped on the power deck, but he has tools. Says he'll cut his way out in a few hours. Great. Meanwhile, the gang can't fire on the Polaris without smashing their own ship. Boys, I think the gang's finished. If we get out of range of their big guns, they'll have to come out of their ship sometime, and then it'll be a man-to-man fight. Right, sir. Hey, what's that noise? Schubert, they're coming out of the ship now. But it won't be any man-to-man fight. Look, great galaxy, an armored tank. That's one of the Martian killer tanks. No ordinary weapon can dent it. It's got rocket guns. Let's get out of here. We can't fight that any more than we could the ship. Warn the men, Corbett. To do what? That tank can hunt them down anywhere on this little hug of rock. And it'll blast the installations to space dust. There is nothing we can do, sir. Not a thing. <laughs> We'll return to the exciting adventures of Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, in just a moment. So, stand by. Spacemen, today, we're honored to have a distinguished visitor from outer space. He is Flavius the Elder, Prime Minister of the asteroid Orias. Sir, did you have a smooth space trip? (laughs) Oh, I see. Well, you know, Spacemen, it's a bit difficult to understand the people of Orias. Takes years of study, so I'll interpret for you. The Prime Minister says he was shaken up by the moon tides while blasting through Jupiter's orbit. Oh, after the ship steadied off, the stewardess made you feel good with a magic formula. Well, uh, what was it like? I understand. It came in a box. You opened it and poured rich golden brown flakes into a bowl. And then you poured milk and sprinkled sugar over it. And you say it, it tasted wonderful? You had how many? Three bowls. Mr. Prime Minister, was the name on the box Kellogg's Pep? It was. Well, sir, you'll forgive me, but Arias must be a very backward planet. There is no secret magic to Kellogg's Pep. Almost everybody in the solar system knows about the build-up wheat cereal. Every spaceman starts off his day with Pep. It helps give you lots of food energy to make a good start on the day. And Pep has those vitamins necessary to build strong bones and tough muscles. (laughs) The Prime Minister says he's going to stock up with a good supply of Pep right away. And, Spaceman, you know that's a good idea. So ask Mom to get you a package of the build-up wheat cereal today. Kellogg's Pep. As the space gang's armored killer tank charges toward the shattered atmosphere dome, Tom, Roger, and Colonel Cowan fall back to warn the men of their danger. With their hand weapons useless against the heavy armor of the tank, and with no way to defend themselves against its rocket guns, it appears that they have lost their battle to save the precious medicine of the satellite of life. Colonel Cowan, what's going on? Is the ship still firing? Worse, Bailey. Those space crawlers have a tank. Tell the men to scatter. Hide if they can, but not in here. You won't be safe even around the building holding the medicine now. The tank can pick you off one by one. Oh, that's right, Bailey. Go ahead. Yeah, but the medicine, the virus, I, they'll get all the F3. Isn't there anything we can do? Nothing. That tank's invulnerable to anything we've got. Blast. Okay, Colonel. You and the cadets better hurry, too. Come on, sir. Let's get moving. Call it, Manning. Go along. Well, what about you, sir? I'm staying. Perhaps I can get in one lucky shot. That's impossible. You'll be killed. I've failed in my mission. Failed all the people who need F3. Failed my wife. She's going to die without it. So you go on. Wait, Captain. Come with us to the storehouse. The storehouse? What for? Oh, please, sir. Come on. Hurry. Before they blast it. All right, Corbett. But why? A wild idea. There's still something we can try. The body jets. We can fly with them. But not far enough or fast enough to escape. Anyway, escaping won't save the minutes. I wasn't thinking about escape. We'll attack. Wait, why? Those big jars of acids we saw, Colonel. In this gravity, we can carry several apiece. Drop them on the tank. Acid. Yes, acid can get through every crack. Eat into the tank control. By the rings of Saturn, it might work at that. Hey, Junior, this could be our big chance. The only one we have left, so let's make it good. <laughs> Okay, boys, we're directly 
over the tank. Start dropping the jars of acid. Right, sir. Jars away! Two direct hits. Great work, boys. They don't seem to notice. Get their guns. They're making so much racket they never even heard the crash. Well, try another one, Roger. Okay, here goes. I missed with that one. Close, though. Could be just as good. The acid will splash up against the tank bottom. Follow the tank, boys. Stay directly over it where they can't spot us. And be sure you don't get any acid on your spacesuit. Okay, sir. Hey, the right thing that time. We've got to stop that thing before it gets the men. It's a miracle they've managed to escape so far. There's one man down there who's not escaping. Look at him, Tom. He's on nuts. Running right toward the tank. It's over. I guess he expects the tank to stop and pick him up. They're not stopping. Not even slowing down. Ran right over it. His own pal. Colonel, that's something else. The tank's in trouble. Look at that smoke pouring out of the engine. It's working, boys. They're losing control. The acid's working. Uh Uh-oh. Look at the hatch. It's opening. A perfect chance. Drop another jar. Fast. Mine's gone. Well, I just dropped my last jar. Me too. Then we're in trouble. They've spotted us through the hatch. They're trying to angle their guns up high to knock us down. Look out. They're backing. That gives them enough elevation. Jupiter has got a train full on us. Why the dark? We'll never make it. Miss! And that gun will never fire again, sir. It's out of commission. The acids have knocked out the controls. That goes for the whole tank, boys. Those space rats will have to come out and fight on even terms now. Oh, Sam, they don't like that idea. Look at them. Filing out with their hands up. Colonel, we've done it. We've won. Yes, Tom, we've won. The whole universe has won. Boys, thanks largely to you, Rhea will remain for all the world the satellite of life. Don't miss the next action-packed adventure with Tom Corbett and the Space Cadets on Tuesday when they look forward to a pleasurable rest on the planet Venus but find themselves involved in a desperate pursuit of danger. Tune in same time, same station for the next thrilling interplanetary adventure with Tom Corbett, Space Cadet. Brought to you by Kellogg's Pep. The Build-Up Wheat Cereal. Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, starring Frankie Thomas, can also be seen on television and appears in the comic sections of many of America's leading newspapers. Look for it daily and in weekend editions. Featured in the cast were Jan Merlin, Neil O'Malley, Dick Keith, and Ian Martin. Today's program was written by Don Hughes and directed by Drex Hines. Jackson Beck speaking. Kellogg's Raisin Bran, Raisins and Bran Flakes too. They're out of this world, they're out of one package. Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Kellogg's Raisins are honeycomb coated to keep them tender. The Bran Flakes crisper. Kellogg's Raisin Bran, Raisins and Bran Flakes too. They're out of this world, they're out of one package. Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Eat Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Eat Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Eat Kellogg's Raisin Bran. 